Hi and welcome to this video about the Kalman filter properties. You're assumed to know what a Kalman filter is before watching this video, and if you don't, there's a special video about this. Let's start by recalling the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter works on linear models, models like this, where the next uh, state is a linear combination of the previous one, plus some process noise. And the measurement is a linear combination of the state plus some measurement noise. We assume that both the process noise and the measurement noise have zero mean, and that we know the covariance matrices for these. Then the Kalman filter algorithm can be formulated, and it's formulated in two steps. It's a time update step, where we predict what will happen in the next time. Uh, you can see the expressions here. Note that since we're taking a step forward in time and we don't know exactly what's going to happen, we become more uncertain about the state at this step. The next step is the measurement update, where an observed measurement of the state is incorporated. This is done in this linear way, where the current state is compensated with the Kalman filter gain times the difference between the current obtained measurement and the predicted measurement. In this step, the covariance of the state is small, becomes smaller because we learn information about the system. Let's now look at optimality properties of the filter. So, uh, for a linear model, the Kalman filter provides the same solution as the weighted least squares method does. That means that the Kalman filter is the best linear unbiased estimator, that is blue. Furthermore, the Kalman filter is the analytic solution to the Bayesian filtering recursion, given that all involves stochastic variables are Gaussian. If that is the case, the prediction becomes a Gaussian distribution. The filtering estimate is also a Gaussian distribution. And this is important. The innovation, so the difference between the uh, obtained and the predicted measurements are Gaussian with uh, zero mean and a known covariance. Lastly, it should be noticed that the measurements only affect the estimate of the mean in the Kalman filter, not P. Hence, a lot of things can be pre-computed. P, for example, but also the Kalman filter gain. Robustness and sensitivity are two properties that are really important to all filtering applications. We talk about them in the Kalman filter context because in this context, it's easy to derive expressions for them. So, We'll talk about the following properties. Observability, which uh, tells us if it's actually possible to derive information about the state that we're looking for. Divergence tests, so indicate as early as possible that the filter is not working as expected. Outlier rejection, monitor the observations that we get so that we don't include obviously wrong observations, outliers. Bias error, Something that we get if the model is not correct. Sensitivity analysis is something else that's described in the book. It um, explains how you can see uh, how sen sensitive the model is to the properties of it and what you might have had to estimate. And finally, numerical issues. Observability. We'll talk about three different kinds of observability. Snapshot observability, classic observability, and observability in terms of the P matrix. Snapshot observability is when we can derive the full state from one single measurement. This is obtained when H can be inverted. Classic observability for both time invariant and time varying cases is defined by the ability to invert the observability matrices, so these matrices, the time invariant case and this time invariant case. More or less, this indicates that if you put up the problem as a batch problem, we can solve for the initial states. Finally, for filtering, uh, watching the P matrix is a good idea because the P matrix indicates how uncertain we are about a certain uh, part of the state space. And if we don't get information that is in um, observability about a certain direction in the state, 
then the direction and the p matrix will blow up and become really large. Hence, if we actually monitor the condition number of p, we can see if we have observability. We also can derive which part of the state is observed and which one cannot be observed. Sometimes the filter stops working as expected. It diverges. We will study this by looking at innovations. Uh, if the innovations are not what they are expected to be, we have a problem. Principal reasons for this could be model errors or sensor model errors. It could be offsets, drifts, incorrect covariances, scaling factors, or missing parts in the dynamic model, for example. Or sensor errors themselves, so outliers or missing data. Or it could be numerical issues. To resolve these two first cases, we have to redesign the filter to actually match the proper models. If the last two things happen, the filter can be restarted or just a measurement skipped to solve the problem. All sensors sometimes deliver outliers, that is measurements that do not reflect the true state of the system. Outliers can be detected and reacted using a hypothesis test. The idea here is to test if the innovations has the statistical properties that they're expected to have. If everything works as expected, there's no outlier and we can use the measurements. If this uh, squared norm, indicated up here, is too large, so we have uh, large deviations between the predicted and the expected measurement, then we uh, consider this an outlier and not use it. This can also be done in batches. Numerical issues sometimes occur. And the very best way to actually deal with this is square root implementation of the Kalman filter. Uh, the square root implementations uh, implicitly ensure symmetricity and positive definiteness of the covariance matrix, which can be a problem, and at the same time halves the order of the condition number in the P matrices, also improving the numerical properties. This is, however, not a really quick fix. A quick fix would be to impose symmetry by simply adding uh, the transpose of the covariance matrix to covariance matrix and dividing by two at uh, regular intervals. To use the Joseph form of the covariance update in the measurement update step looking like this, which is slightly more numerically sound look at the eigenvalues of the covariance matrix and uh, push those that are negatives into the positive side. That will make the matrix positive definite, but this is quite an expensive operation. Avoid using singular arc matrices, even if that would be the case. So blow up the uncertainty bit just to be on the safe side. And generally increase Q and R if needed, so dithering just to account for model errors and other similar problems. To summarize, the Kalman filter is a best linear unbiased estimate for linear models, and it's actually the optimal estimator for linear Gaussian models. It analytically solves the Bayesian filtering recursion. Now, using a Kalman filter, or any filter for, for that matter, you should consider observability so that the problem is actually solvable. You should uh, monitor for divergence so that you can make sure that a filter does what it's supposed to. Uh, look for outliers so you can react them before they push the filter into a divergence mode. Watch out for numerical issues and pay attention to the sensitivity to the parameters that you might have identified for the model. Read more about this in section 7.2 to 7.7 .7 in the textbook.